built a large drinking area outside along with the music venue platform. Point three, drainage, sewerage and water supply in the area and to the site. These have already been installed prior to a planning agreement. We already struggle with an overworked sewerage plant, reduced water pressure. There have been no soakway tests carried out on the site. And due to the quality of the earth, which is mainly clay in the area, we do fear that this will cause a runoff of water, which could be a risk to our properties as well as to the highway. Point four, access and roads. Entrance to the um, proposed site is within a 20 mile an hour restriction and it falls 40 meters, not 50 meters as stated by the highways from a very severe bend in the road and it is near to the brow of the hill, reducing clear vision for driving. There are no road crossings within that area. It suffers from heavy, heavy traffic, motorcycles, cycles, pedestrians and lorries, and sadly not all adhere to the speed limit or driving educate. Point five, wildlife. Sadly, trees, hedges have already been removed and groundworks carried out. That includes the installation of sewerage pipes, water pipes, and um, hard standing areas and a toilet shower block. This has all been done prior to planning agreement. The trees have been removed during the time of nesting and have caused problems for the wildlife. Similar to the wildlife, no studies have been carried out to what like wildlife are in that area and are there any protected um, species there. Point six, there will be an increase of antisocial behavior. We're already having to struggle with persons leaving soiled nappies on the roads, pavements, drunkenness, urinating and vomiting in public places, shouting, swearing, loud music. The list goes on, it's endless. Point seven, work has already carried out on the site. Most of the work has been carried out. Um, it has caused damage to council property on the highway. They've damaged um, flagstones, which are going to be a trip hazard to anybody using them. And we question, has planning been granted as we've been in contact with the enforcement department at Newton Abbott and they have failed to act or to respond. The conclusion to um, this application, the Warren has a long history with the holiday industry. However, since the 1960s, it has been steamrolled away from its farmlands, its open spaces, its destroyed nature habitat, and made local residents prisoners of its industry. To allow the development to go ahead will go against the national and local policy to reduce carbon footprint, emissions, and environmental reductions. I wish to thank you all uh, for listening to us today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. James. Um, I appreciate you coming along today. Um, obviously, you're, you're welcome to stay um, in the meeting, but I, I will not, won't be able to ask you to comment or um, to make any other uh, comments to the, to, to the piece that you've just added, but I do appreciate your time. Um, Thank you, and please call me Anthony. Okay, <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, right, so we turn our attention to Matt Myers. Mr. Myers, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, can I ask um, which item on the agenda are you um, coming to speak about this evening? Um, I'm here to uh, speak about the application for a camping site um, in Dawlish Warren. Okay. Um, you have you have three minutes. Please um, please go ahead. Okay, so um, I would um, like to say that I'm for the proposal um, of the campsite um, in Dawlish Warren. Um, as a local resident, um, it's nice to see a refreshing new take on camping that's almost going back to roots. 
as opposed to the typical um, sort of uh, static caravan um, development that, you know, unfortunately you've seen all over Dawlish Warren. Um, <clears throat> looking at the planning proposal, it's for 26 um, five meter bell tents um, pre-erected um, on the piece of land uh, with a shower block um, and a small reception building. The, um, <clears throat> the uh, proposal is looks pretty sustainable um they're using green energy um which you know everybody's trying to push for at the moment um it's um you know looking at the the report on the on the road obviously this um as anthony said there's an issue with the road there is a highways report there to say that it is um not going to cause an issue to the current um traffic on the road um, there's a lot of uh, parking spaces provided with the, with the um, development, which I think is good. Um, and I think that the, the, the local economy really needs something to sort of boost, um, you know, and, and, and bring something back to the area, start bringing people to the area. Um, because as I'm sure you can appreciate, it's been a bit of a struggle. And I think everybody needs to sort of like, you know, try and get trade back to the area. Um, okay. I'm sure this year, will be particularly busy and the added accommodation will certainly be be of help. Um, I did also look at the um, further into the planning because um, <clears throat> there's obviously been, um, as Anthony said, the, the works commenced. Um, I've seen there's, a, there's an entrance and stuff that has been put in um, prior to um, planning approval. Um, <clears throat> but actually it, um, online, um, planning um, approval has been granted for a new entrance um, uh, nine months ago. Um, so everybody can see that online. Um, yep. And there's also an, an ecology study carried out as well um, <clears throat> to obviously remove the hedgerow as per um, their recommendations. Um, so that's an application that's actually already been approved um, prior to that, so at least that's good, um, you know, and, and that's that has been done correctly. As for the other comments, obviously, you know, I'm not really too sure, but but based on that, um, I think it's a pretty good proposal. Is it something? Is it? To, did you live nearby there? Yeah, is yeah, in like Dawlish. I've uh, yeah. lived in Dawlish all my life. Yeah, uh, my okay. family lived live very locally all their life. Yeah, um, okay. So you know, obviously, I, I you know I've seen the development of Dawlish Warren. Um, you know, I'm not for everything, but I think, you know, certainly a small scale development like this, um, you know, the land's restricted, so it can't grow anymore anyway. Um, so that's like the maximum size, obviously you're surrounded by camping, but it's just unfortunate that the, the, there's no, um, no camping of that nature really left in the area. And I think that's quite a nice thing to sort of bring families back to the area that don't necessarily want to go to like a big, overdeveloped um you know campsite like ladies mile or golden sands cofton you know um places like that so i think um from that point of view it's pretty good to sort of do something different in the area okay yeah i'm certainly for it well thank you matt for, for coming along and and giving your opinion we will take all of that into consideration both um from anthony and yourself um thank you we're, we're going to carry on with the meeting now so um you won't be able to um speak again but do appreciate both of you taking the time um, to come along today so we're going to go forward with the with the agenda thank you um so if i can move on to you yola to give us some details of the correspondence please uh, yes certainly um so applications granted in support of this council's recommendation uh, flat one four barton villas single story side and rear extension st jean exeter road garage revised scheme uh, applications granted where this council was not consulted, Solimar, Winwood Lane, Crown Lift, One Pine, T2 to five metres above ground level. And then applications contrary to this council's recommendation, Dawlish Warren main resort grass area, Dawlish Warren installation of 34 metre observation wheel, loading and unloading platform with guarding and kiosk. And that's the one that I emailed everybody about with the more details as yeah. they did take on some of the comments that were given. That's right. I think there was the, the conditions, I think, were very much 
in line with the uh, the things that we discussed here at the at the town council planning so okay um moving on then um we've heard from two members of the public and we're now ready to from the point of view of uh the first item going into 210572 which is the field warren road um this is a proposal for 26 bell tents a shower block a barn and 29 car parking spaces so Yola, can I ask you to um, share your screen and, and we can have a look at the development, please? Hopefully, members, you've had a chance to have a read beforehand. But... <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Right. So, do any members have any comments or any thoughts on, on this item at all? Councillor Wigley. Uh, thank you, Chair. Close um, to the pass. <laughs> I notice in the description it says reception and yet looking through the plans I couldn't see anything that was labelled as reception or anything as a sort of an administration building at all and that gives me some cause for concern amongst other things. Okay. If it is a site with permanently erected tents and those are structures that need supervision, need checking, need it's not like you roll up with your tent, you put your tent up, if it falls down in the middle of the night, you can put it back up again. If this sort of tent structure has any sort of issues at any time, not only are the uh, uh, um, uh, visitors going to need on-site assistance, and if there is no reception block, I'm not sure how they're going to get that. Right. But also with this sort of uh, place where you roll up and there's 26 tents, I would be worried if it wasn't supervised that there is no way of um, ensuring that it doesn't become a loud, noisy nuisance. Um, I, I have severe problems with, with a number of other things on this as well. And, and all in all, my sort of feeling as I look at it is that it is too much in a small space. It's going to be quite high. It's going to be quite dominating i think it could ease I mean, we're already hearing i'm already getting lots of complaints about the noise coming from ladies mile just down the road and their sort of outdoor entertainment uh, which is is resonating down into the rest of the town i think this one will also be quite prominent and noisy across the town as well as just to the uh, uh, a local resident so it's more than the uh, 40 odd houses that are adjacent to this, it, it, it will resonate inland as well, I think. But most importantly of all, um, having read through, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I, as far as I could see, they were talking about uh, just connecting to the main drains. We know this is um, just across from the um, already quite, um, how should we put it, pungent um, uh, Timaru Gardens, the local uh, uh, mm. sewage plant. And worst of all, they said that they would be putting surface water into the mains sewers. So I think this doesn't feel like the right proposal. <coughs> if it were pitch up and tent and, and, and have a traditional sort of camping experience where you leave nothing but footprints and you take nothing but pictures, uh, I would be less concerned. But this sort of um, 26 tents pre-arranged, pre-put up uh, with, with sort of a party type sort of field, I'm not sure this is the right place for it. And, and I, I have a lot of sympathy for what we've heard locally. Um, I would be, I mean, I'll wait to hear what other, what other councillors have to say, but I would be looking for a um, objection on the grounds of overdevelopment, poorly thought out drainage, um, um, 
overlooking and loss of privacy for the local residents and the potential noise nuisance that this could cause. Okay, thank you, Councillor Wrigley. Another couple of members would also like to speak to this one. Um, Councillor Heath, you were next, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, just before I ask any other questions, just making sure myself and everyone knows exactly the spot. So as you turn off the main road, the 379, is it the, the uh, I think it's probably about the, once you go around the bend there, it's about the second or first gate on the right, that field there. Is that where we are? We haven't gone down the hill, have we? Or is it down the hill? We, we haven't gone down, sorry, if, if I may, Chair, yeah, we have not go gone down the hill. So you're driving along the A379 from the Exeter Road into Dawlish Warren. Yeah. You go around a number of bends, you go past Warren Farm on the right, you go past um, the fungus shop, um, and it's then on that sharp corner round where you do a sharp corner and there's um, a row of houses round the corner, a row of houses on your left. Right. You then go along that last bit of flat and then down the hill towards the Mount Pleasant Inn on the right. Okay. So it, it, it's it's on, that, on that really sharp right angle bend. Right. I was thinking it was on that first field when they often do, uh, well, they used to do fireworks and bonfires there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, that's that's a bit more separated. I'm yeah, do you so want to have a quick look one. at the map? Right. I'm glad that's clarified. Hopefully okay. that helps others as well. Yeah. Obviously, I don't know some of the uh, independent speakers, how independent they are, whether or not there's any interests, because they don't necessarily have to declare it as we do. But um, the most important thing is uh, the habitat survey that hasn't been done and uh, the ones from the ecology, they weren't happy, if you've read that one. Mm. Um, the fact I seem to agree with the overdevelopment, there is rather a lot on not a massive site. Um, the comment, obviously, of people being sick and the rest of it, well, that's humanity, isn't it? So not a planning issue as such, unfortunately. Um, but it, it is a point, you know, if locals feel that um, it, this is going to contribute to it, it is a hard one here because it's a seaside town. You expect people to come come away, and we've got to get the balance right between um, enjoying yourself, etc. So my thought is with uh, Councillor Martin Wrigley that was, if there's no supervision, there's no proper reception area, maybe the owner of the land pops in once a week or whatever he might do. That is a concern because also we now know there are fire risks, especially with camps. Um, we tend to have barbecues and so on, and that's the last thing we want is a fire up down there. Um, and the sort of a reception with the fire extinguishers and all the other things is a, is a safety issue going on here as well. So I'd want to see far more details on the plan, which is a bit skimpy at the moment, uh, to make a proper decision for yes, that's for sure. So if it wasn't there, I'd have to say no, because the information is actually missing, which is a bit of a worry. So that's where I am at the moment, but I'm listening to everybody. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Councillor Heath. Could we have a quick look at the, 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 the plan? Could I ask you, just before I bring other members in, just so we, we can see the map stage of it, Yolo, please, just so everyone's really firm as to where it actually is. I think that'll be useful. So there's that, that if you remember, we had members, we had a, a um, this field came before us for the gate on that very, that, sh that quite um, sharp bend, as you turn to where the houses are and the bungalows are, that little road that's off at the top of the, the, the map there is Little Wheat Lane that's joining um, Mount Pleasant Road. Is it Warren Road? I keep saying Mount Pleasant, so I think it's, yeah, okay. So there's that, you can see where the gate entrance is just before the bend. And obviously on the other side of that road are the, are the, um, the properties that um, the, one of the members of the public was mentioning. Yeah, okay. I think that makes it a bit clearer for everyone. Okay. So thank you for your comments, Councillor Heath. We'll now go to, let's see who's next on the list. Councillor Foden, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I'm concerned that it's overdevelopments in the in the countryside, but also overdevelopments very close to a residential area. Um, and while I accept that Dawlish Warren is known um, for its holiday um, holiday resort and holiday destination, 
there's also many residents that live in the area and I'm concerned for the proximity of this proposed development to the houses. It basically, is a, it is a residential road opposite. Um, and then I'm concerned that the amount that is proposed for there coming out on by onto the road by that bend. I'm also concerned to hear um, what the residents said, um, the members of the public said, sorry, that trees and hedgerows have been destroyed during nesting season. And if that's the case, then that goes against the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981. So I'm very concerned about that. Um, so overall, I, I'm, I object to this application overall. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferdin. Um, I saw another hand a moment ago. Um, Councillor Moorhood, did you want to go ahead as well? Thank you. You're on mute. You're on mute, Councillor Moorhood. The hand disappeared. It was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, yes, several things concern me. A comment was made that there are no similar um, facilities. That's correct in a way. There are no permanent bell tents. Mm. However, there is a considerable mix of holiday accommodation around Dawlish Warren and from Exeter Road outwards towards Dawlish Warren and the coast, uh, including a lot of campsites, which is, uh, you know, it seems to cater for most people. There are cottages, there are lodges, there are caravans, there are campsites. I can see that this is something a little bit newer. However, it is adjacent to Leadstone campsite Mm -hmm. and uh, the, the field that is being divided off, the one big field has been divided. Yeah. And I'm disappointed that this is on the top part of the field and exiting onto that particular road around which what is virtually a blind bend. It is actually opposite other um, holiday accommodation, rather than being the bottom end of the field, which already had a track and which wasn't so near. My concern is, there is going to be a tremendous amount of noise from bell tents. I've stayed in a bell tent. Um, Chudley did them, Chudley Rocks, a few years back. And you don't do your cooking in the bell tent. You do all that outside. Yeah. So yeah. there is going to be a, a lot of noise generated. Now, from the layout on that plan, it seems to me that that layout could, be, could have been a lot more sympathetic towards the existing residents. If the, the buildings, if you like, were more towards the roadside, the going down towards Mount Pleasant, and the tents were concentrated more to the uh, the Langstone end of the field, if you like. I don't, mm. I can't tell which is north and south from here, mm. and the Leadstone, which is already camping. I I would find it a bit more understandable, but to have a row of bell tents on the bank because it's already higher you see from the topographical map and we know the area anyway yeah uh, we're going to have a lot of noise and potential fire risk certainly smells from barbecues and goodness knows what else as you say as, as councillor Foden said really just across the road from very long existing um homes I think it could be a much better layout they could do what they want to what they're thinking of doing giving a bit of variety to the camping experience and the holiday experience, but I think it ought to be a much more sympathetic uh, design to that field so that most of the noise and um, smells or whatever else are, go are not going to be directly across the road from residential properties. There's plenty of room in that field and there's a campsite on the other side and at the moment nothing on the other end of the field. So it doesn't seem right to me. Not, not the idea as a whole, but the layout that they're proposing. Okay, thank you, Councillor Moorhood. Um, Councillor Taylor, you wanted to make a comment on this item. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, both of the members of the public for, for their inputs. It's not often that we, that we get the, the both sides of the coin uh, when when we when we have a, a, an application like this and certainly the uh, uh, the online uh, mixture of uh, comments are uh, some for 
uh, but mostly against. Uh, but uh, but I, I do I do appreciate uh, uh, the the the, um, uh, the 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 comments uh, regarding the the new offering that uh, that this uh, that this application could bring for Dawlish and uh, bringing trade to the area. Um, I was interested about the um, application for the entrance, which of course was made prior to this application coming forward. So. Um, in terms of the permission that was given that would by highways that would have been permission for access to an agricultural field uh, I think highways will want to take um, a second look at uh, whether they believe this particular entrance is suitable for the comings and goings of uh, uh, two, two dozen bell tents uh, all which appear to be uh, serviced by car uh, for the for the uh, mainly for car users, although of course we're not too far away from uh, Dawlish Warren Station. Um, perhaps if um, if it was uh, self assembly tents, uh, there'd be more people arriving on foot, bike, or horseback uh, from. Uh, from well, they wouldn't bring their horse on the train. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I think you get where I'm coming from on yeah. on, on that. So yes, while we while I appreciate that it might bring business, it's also going to bring more traffic, and it is a dangerous corner. And I would want to see um, uh, certainly improvements. Uh, we can't ask the applicant to go and buy the other half of the field, which would, uh, as uh, I think Councillor Moorhead would would is perhaps alluding to. Um, but if that was possible. Certainly, it, you'd make it. You, you could make a better fist of uh, of this proposal uh, with with a, with the entrance from a, a, the other end of what was the one field. Yeah. Um, and of course, you'd you'd also be able to put your main buildings A, B, and C. A being the the toilet block, as um, if I read the plans correctly. B being the reception block, and C the sort of communal area for for people to to get together to. Uh, do what they want. Um, it's not 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 big enough really for a for a particularly big uh, uh, group of musicians, uh, but I dare say that that could be on the cards uh, given um, given enough uh, support um, from 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 uh, from people who are going there uh, to to camp. Um, I think on on balance. So, but on balance, I am concerned about the amenity of local residents. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very prominent site. The main buildings are built on the most, on the highest part of the site. And while uh, the tent, the bell tents themselves are demountable, the other buildings are, are permanent. Mm. Um, and I, I, I'd say so from, a, from a landscape point of view, I don't like it. From a noise generation point of view, I don't like it. Uh, and from a resident's amenity, lack of amenity, uh, you know, the diminution of amenity of the neighbours, uh, I think it's probably the, the the biggest thing against it. Yes, let's have something like this in the area, but no, let's not go upsetting all of the neighbours. They have to bear enough during the season. Yes, we need the trade, but no, we don't want people doing unmentionable things or throwing away uh, rubbish as we saw last season unfortunately um near near uh, near other residential properties on their way down to the beach or wherever it is they're going uh, so from from my point of view um it's it's a it's it's a welcome application but it's a it's not in the right place okay thank you for that councillor taylor um okay councillor heath you wanted to to come back in um, just picked at the post, Councillor Wrigley. I'll bring you in just shortly. Carry on, Councillor Heath. Very quick. I'm just reading through the Devon Highway. This hasn't got a date on the form, unfortunately, but it seems to be referring to this. But I'm a bit puzzled in one minute. It said 20 miles an hour. Is it 20 miles an hour, that bit of road there? That's it right. Is. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's that bit. But the people who we said don't always stick to it. Um, I, th I, think, I think what we've all said, it seems as if we're not very happy uh, certainly an overdevelopment in my my opinion I like to see campsites at seasides and I agree with the actual idea of um, having tents but as it's been pointed out tents don't stop sound and there will be a lot of noise in the summer uh, also are there any restrictions I didn't see any when I looked through like 
particular months that they can stay there because some of these camps are tending to be almost all year round these days. Um, have I missed that one? Was, was there any restrictions on what they can do? Or can I don't they believe so. No, I don't any believe there are any. On music or playing music? No. No. Well, as it stands, I'm against them. OK, thank you. Councillor Wrigley. So having heard everybody speak, I think I'd like to propose that we uh, object, that we refuse, that um, we, re we object on the grounds of it's uh, overdevelopment, it's overbearing, the design is likely to cause um, um, uh, a, a noise environmental um, issue, the uh, drainage issues are not satisfactory, we are concerned about the road access and the overall impact on amenity to the local residents. I'd further like to put that if the officer is um, uh, of a mind to approve that this go to committee. Could we add habitat loss as well? Habitat loss is a good one to add as well, yes please. Because it has been raised by a few people as well. Okay, thank you, Councillor Heath. Are you happy to include that in your proposal, Councillor yes. Wrigley? Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Taylor. You're on mute. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm just um, looking up the application because I thought there was a restriction on the, uh, on the times that this would be open. Um, on the application form. So I'm just looking at the application form now. Okay, thank you. To see whether that does give an, uh, an indication of, of when it should, when it would be open. The notes I had was 26 bell tents, shower block barn, and 29 car parking spaces. So what I know mention was made of the um, the entrance area and the idea of uh, at least 29 cars oh, yeah. coming and going. <clears throat> So existing use, uh, please describe the current use of the site. Preparations are being made to use the land for 56 days camping this year. This will involve the deployment of portable buildings such as a shower, toilet block and reception to support camping. Ah, so I've misread that then, haven't I? Um, because the field's going to be used for camping this year for 56 days. Yeah. But going forward, this is going to be a permanent site. Yeah, so, with bell so, tents. Yeah. So from that point of view, um, I think yeah, we, it, it would be very reasonable for us to also propose uh, the, the, the site over the road, for instance, uh, is only available from May to September, May the 1st to September the 1st, I believe, for, yeah. for, the, for the top field. Uh, the um, uh, the eclipse field, we all know it as. Uh, so there is a, a restriction on, on on that, and certainly I would want to see a restriction. Uh, so that at least if uh, if if it does uh, find favour with our uh, planning uh, with the Teambridge Planning Department, then that uh, at least the, uh, the the local residents won't have to put up with it for twelve months a year. Um, so. So could we also add that perhaps to to the um, uh, to our proposal? That uh, it, but I think uh, I would I would also con uh, also support Councillor Rigby's um, view that um, that we would take this to committee because I think there's a there's a lot of questions that need to be asked really and uh, to be satisfied uh, comments to be satisfied. Okay, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Would you be happy to include that in your? It's becoming a long list, I know, I'd Councillor be Wrigley. Happy but... to include lack of seasonal restrictions. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's the objection. Okay, thank you, um, Councillor Moorhead. You wanted to to come in, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I would like to second that proposal, but I would like to add a general comment. Um, this isn't the only application coming. Um, over recent years, the holiday accommodation has expanded considerably, as has 
our housing development. And my feeling is that the sewage works at Timaru is not really keeping up with it. In fact, they do have plans to take in some places to divert uh, surface water out of the main sewage system. And this one, I believe you said it was going into it. They were trying to reduce the pressure by discharging into other local water courses, shall we say. So I think that we really got to bend this, bear these sort of things in mind in future until and unless Southwest Water come up with some major ref refurbishing and um, expansion plans. This is something that's going to affect the, the, the parish generally, but I'm happy to second that proposal, that extended proposal. <laughs> okay, thank you, Councillor Moorhood. Um, I've still got two more hands wanting to, to come in. Hopefully we've got a proposal in a seconder. So are these just additional comments you, you yes. just wanted to quickly just make? Just very quickly to back up Councillor Moorhood. Um, having sat with Southwest Water and helped them work with the redesign to stop the flooding down Set Maiden Lane that used to happen, they certainly are trying to redesign lots of the sewerage around the town so that the uh, ground the 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 um, groundwater is not going into the foul sewers, so they're splitting the two out, which is why this one's particularly difficult. Um, especially down at Ladies Mile, for example, they're doing a massive amount of work down there, and all of these things are to reduce the 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 load on the pipes in general and Timaru as well in particular. Okay, thank you for that, um, Councillor Taylor. I can't. I can't see any reference to the um, to service water going to the uh, to the existing drainage system. Um, certainly, the uh, question number thirteen on the application form: foul sewage does go to the main sewer. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't a question on the application form regarding surface water, unless I'm looking in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. uh, but but from that point of view, I would have very much have expected, and I, in fact, I'm, I don't know whether it's legal these days to allow um, water to be directed, uh, surface water, rainwater to be directed to the main uh, sewerage system. Uh, that's precisely what Southwest Water have been trying to, to split and you know, they yeah. would want to avoid it for any new application. Yeah. Um, so, so certainly if, 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 that has been indicated that then um, yes, it should it should be an objection, but I'm not sure it is, and I wouldn't want us to be uh, to be taking it into account as a as a potential refuse a refusal unless we uh, Section, sorry. couch our terms effectively, sufficiently effectively. Sorry, Councillor Wrigley's uh, coming back. I think he's Section, mentioned he's found Section, something. I think Section Eleven asks how will surface water be disposed of? Ah, application right. form. And it says it's ticked the box for main sewer, having not ticked the box for sustainable drainage system, existing watercourse, soak away or pond stroke lake. OK, I was on the wrong page. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Councillor Wrigley, for that. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a no, that's a no, no. <laughs> OK. OK. Were there any other points you wanted to make, Councillor Taylor, or are you happy, you happy with that? I'm happy with that, and I'm happy to sustain uh, the objection from that point of view. Okay, thank you. Well, we have a, a proposal and a seconder, so I think we go to the vote as to whether we reject this. Would you like to go over briefly the um, the proposal as you, you made it, Councillor Wrigley, please? Just so we're clear. Can I ask Yola to read it back instead? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I please, knew Yola. that was coming. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so we've got um, overdevelopment, overbearing, um, likely uh, design likely to cause noise issues, um, drainage um, adds to existing issues, and I've got the note about surface water going to the main sewer, um, concerned re road and access, overall impact on amenities of local residents, loss of habitat, um, and if officer is minded to approve, to pop it into Cat B. Okay. Thank and you. lack of seasonal restrictions. Oh, lack of seasonal restrictions. Yes, Thank I've you. got that as per the surrounding fields. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Councillor Moorhood, a quick point. I was just about to say, let's uh, go to the vote. But if it's a quick point. 
it Carry is on. a quick point because we we know that there was an application to create this entrance so we didn't know what it was for and the highways letter which is on this application is not dated we don't know whether that relates to simply a gate from the field onto the road or whether it applies to this actual application i think we need to in some way identify that and ask again whether that relates to this particular development okay thank you or whether they need to to revisit the the, the planning application so i think you can add the add the point out we concerned that there is like there could be highway ob objections or we want clarity on their highway objections if that's okay yola please are you, you i'm saying that for you councillor wrigley are you are you happy for that clarification thank you okay well we'll go to the vote on on that is everyone clear as to to what we're voting for as it were okay so voting to um to reject the planning item 210572 please any votes for the application any votes to abstain Councillor Lowther, I haven't seen a vote from her. No. I can't. I can't hear you, Councillor Lowther. You're on mute. Sorry. I wasn't voting because I was out of the room. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So one abstention, but majority um, against the application. Thank you. Right. We certainly don't expect. Um, our um, members of the public who both came along to, to talk on that item to stay with us. You're welcome to, to uh, log out and go ahead with your normal Friday night activities, I guess, from that point of view. If you wish to say, you're more than welcome to anyway. We, ladies and gentlemen, are going to move on now to, um, to the next item, which is 210636. And this is number 79, Exeter Road. This item is a erection of a summer house in the garden. So there we are. I haven't got a lot to see on that one, really, have we, <laughs> from that point of view? Chair, as a point of clarification, sorry, can I just ask, why do they need planning application for a summer house? Surely it's a temporary wooden building in the back of the garden, unless it's, is it over two and a half metres tall or something? Is it is it really, really big? I couldn't tell from the... I really haven't got an answer to that, if I'm honest with you. Um, uh, it, it's... The scale of it is really hard to judge. So I, um, I mean, my my summary is that it is of a, a significant size. So, but I will um, bring members in to uh, maybe they've got some wisdom to to share with us. Councillor Taylor, please go ahead. I think it might uh, might may well be a, a, a ridge height issue uh, being uh, right next to the rear boundary. Um, am I correct in saying that this? House, so I can't see, can't work it out exactly from the plan. Uh, backs onto the playing field rather yeah. than other other properties. Yes, it um, does. It does. Um, yeah. in, in which case, I have absolutely no objection, and would recommend approval. Okay. Good second that. Thank you, Councillor Moorhood. I'm going to jump in while Councillor Taylor has stopped speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, my only comment would be um, from past experience, it's if you make something that's got a concrete base and it's a solid permanent structure that it comes under planning rather more than if it's what we think of as a summer house, which is a wooden structure with a temporary base. Yeah, I, I think it is. I think it's also it's a reasonable size as well. So I think from, from that point of view. Yeah. OK. Thank you, Councillor Moorhood. Councillor Taylor wants to come in again. Okay. Uh, yes, it would be permitted development if it was if it was not on the boundary. Uh, it would be permitted development. Uh, it, it it can be at the boundary, but the ridge height I think is governed down to three meters. I think it could be up to four meters if it's further away from the boundary. Um, so 
it's this is a it's quite a big it's quite a big uh, summer house, but uh, who's who's going to who's going to, it's not going to affect anybody as far as I can see, unless they want to watch the football, the kids playing football from the roof. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Love, please go ahead. Yes, um, as to mine, as long as it stays as a summer house and doesn't become uh, accommodation. Because it looks rather large to me compared with compared with the house from the drawings. It is right at the end of the the garden, so I think it would only be accessible as a summer house from from the property. But that I take yeah. your point. Well, normally we do. Well, we did we used think... to always put that in as a precautionary thing. Yeah. That it didn't mm. become a residential. Okay. Accommodation permanent residential accommodation well we have a we have a um proposal to um accept the proposal so i'm gonna ask councillor taylor if he would be happy to think in terms of that as a perhaps a condition or see if he will accept that councillor other councillor taylor to be honest Chair, i don't think it's necessary it's it's a it's a smallish um footprint um uh, it's right at the end of the garden. It's it's it would never be granted permission for um, for a, a separate a separate residential dwelling. Um, so so I don't I don't really see the need to be honest with you. Okay, I'm going to move. i come back to you, Councillor Lather, while you're having a, a think about it. Um, we've got other members yeah. who want to speak on it as well. Um, mm -hmm. Councillor Heath, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, even though it might not be a residential building, which we're a little bit worried about, um, I do know from younger children and friends and so on, lots of these summer houses are actually slept in by children overnight as a, as a little sort of excitement thing almost. Yeah. Uh, I'm not actually against that, but um, I can see the point of being just slightly concerned of um, it being an, uh, a new residential building. And these things are happening around the country with the housing shortage. And um, people do sometimes sleep in these things for friends. If there's no noise, fine. Do they say if it's an insulated building or is it one of these very flimsy things? Is there anything on there? I that? don't think I don't think there was a lot of detail. I think it was oh. an outline house, housing plan um, uh, as you, you saw, the plans were very, very straightforward boxes, weren't they? From that point yeah, I'm, I'm having a look here. I can see, it looks like an ordinary shed almost. Yeah. It may mean that you don't have to say anything, but I don't know what other members think. But it's just whether if we are going to accept it, do say, although Council Taylor said didn't think it was necessary, but what's necessary and what's prudent is sometimes different. Um, I'm wondering if uh, we should actually add but not to be used for um, overnight accommodation. Permanent overnight. overnight. Permanent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's, there's no water or toilets there, far as I can see. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Whether that's a bit of an overkill, I don't know what other members feel on that one. Okay. Um, and Councillor Taylor's already made his, his, um, his thoughts known, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> I, <laughs> if you want to come I, back. I feel I feel a bit browbeaten at this point, okay. uh, but, I, but I, I'm happy to go with the flow. Really, yes, I can I can see it would be useful to I can see it would be sensible to to have uh, you know providing it it's it's not used for permanent residential accommodation. Okay. As, as an as an additional, y Yola is just um, indicating she'd like to speak chair. Yeah. Um, I think the term, because this term was used quite a lot, so I think Councillor Lava may have been referring to the, the sentence, something along the lines of that it remains ancillary to home. So it wasn't stating about, you know, camping or overnight or anything like that. It's, it's that it does yeah. remain ancillary to the home as opposed to becoming something bigger and more separate. Is not it, is a separate, right, yeah, not a separate dwelling. Is, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. that's fine. Are you, you comfortable with that, Councillor Lava? Councillor Heath? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, but it is two story. You know, Council, you I haven't forgotten you, Councillor Moorhood. <laughs> okay. Sorry. No, no. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Moorhood, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm thinking along similar lines. I don't think it hurts to make the point that it should not at any time became, become in any way a residential unit. 
It's not difficult to put drains and water down the length of a garden. And I know of somewhere in Brook Street, actually, from a few years ago, where an owner of a house much further along was using one of the cabin style places on the edge of the brook for a, 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 um, a grown up child to temporarily live in. And I think there, thereby, you know, lies a danger if you like yeah. it doesn't cost us anything it doesn't stop them building it there is nothing to be lost by actually just stipulating that it that it should never become as you as uh, yola said ancillary to the main residence yeah okay okay well that has been a, that that line has been agreed by the the proposer and that proposal has been seconded i haven't asked the person who seconded it if they're happy with that but um I'm seeing nods, so we're, we're fine with that. Did anyone else have anything else to say or, or are we ready to go to the vote on this one? Oh, Councillor Heath, you, you, are you ready? You wanted to say something else? Yes, please. Carry on. A, it was already mentioned by, I think it was Councillor Lother, that it's two storey, but I'm, am I looking at the wrong pictures? I can only see single storey. Could somebody clarify that for me? I was just looking at the pictures again to see if I could see it's it's it is single story it is single story right I'm just wondering where uh, Mary it's through you chair it, it, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, I've, I've downloaded the plans on a on a pdf um from the honours presentation oh. and okay. uh, it's a it's a single story building it's um I would say six meters wide by four meters deep um by probably four meters maybe four and a half meters high at the ridge so okay there we are uh, the scale is on the is, is um handily it's uh, to a one and fifty scale on the uh, on the uh, uh plans and elevations provided uh, but they've also provided a scale line which you can work you, you can use to work work the sizes out before okay you, thank you for you clarifying on, that okay yeah, before you go on to the next one let's come back I think I can see where it comes from. I, I no doubt Mary Lowe is going to put us all right, but it is actually a lot taller. I think that's what she's probably referring to than a single story building. You don't normally have one, what, uh, 16, 17 foot high, if that's what, if that's what it is. That is pretty big. Do we, do we realise that? That was the, the point that was made at the, yeah. at the start. Yeah. OK. That was what the concern was about. <laughs> Councillor Lowther, you wanted to, to come in. Can't hear you, Councillor Lather. Sorry, you're you're muted. Thank you. Muted me. Thank this you. has got. I'm trying to defend myself. <laughs> this no, has got a pitch screw, and it's got two windows, two storey. So yeah. it isn't one storey building, and the edge of the pitch pitch roof, which I would say was the beginning of the pitch, is at the same angle and size as the roof of the house. That is the, so if somebody is looking at a different picture than I'm looking at, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, wo <laughs> I'm wondering myself if that's the case, but I think we've- But I'm on it, it's Timbridge site and yeah. it's got the plan up. I, so, I, I totally believe you, Councillor um, Lowther, that's fine. I did say it was quite substantial, but um, I'm not gonna argue over meters or centimeters or even feet on this one. That's. That's fine it's where we are. It's got two lots of windows in it anyway. No, Councillor Taylor. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've got a feeling that uh, Councillor Lowther might have, um, might be looking at a different application because um, what tends, what you can do, if you, if you, you, you sometimes open a file on the Teambridge uh, website uh, and, and look, have a look at some plans and then you go back and try and change the uh, application number and it brings up the previous file that you've already looked already looked at this is this is um, this isn't a two-story building it's a single story building it's a roof plan showing no windows in the roof there are just windows to the front uh, which comprise i thought it was three windows something like that um blah, 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 here we are yeah, so it's like a, a three-piece patio door uh, at the front there's no other windows. It's it's single story, so I. I I'm it stays afraid. here. Seven Vicarage Gardens. Yeah, well, this is seventy nine Exit Road. 
This is 79 Exeter Road we're looking at now. Oh, so well done, Mary. I'm on Vicarage Gardens. <laughs> well, park that thought there. Park is that thought there, Councillor Lather. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned. I was just going to ask you to read out the address that was with it. So thank you. We will <laughs> we will move on then. OK, we have a proposal and a seconder. Um, and I believe we've... Uh, um, if you want to make clear the proposal, it's been a while and we've been around the we've been around the, the applications for a little bit, haven't we, with this one? So um Councillor Taylor, I think you've made the proposal. <laughs> Please go ahead. Uh, Sorry, Councillor well, Taylor, you're muted. You've unmuted me. I've just Thank tried you. to. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, Mother. I can. <laughs> Uh, so my original proposal was no objection. Uh, happy to uh, to uh, ref to include that the building is not used for residential purposes, um, but I don't think it's it warrants uh, having uh, the the other the other um, note about it being ancillary to the main uh, dwelling because I don't think there's any chance whatsoever that this would be used as a separate house. Um, and I've kind of lost the plot here. Who seconded you, Councillor Taylor? I'm sorry. Thank you, Councillor Wrigley. This seems to have been, we've talked about this uh, summer house for quite some time. So Councillor Wrigley, are you happy to, um, ha happy to accept that and second that as, as per Councillor yes. Taylor's? Okay. Very happy. Thank you, Chair. Right. So we will take a vote on that, please. So... Um, in favour, no objections, including as, as long as the house is not used for residential purposes. Thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will move on to the next one. I will try and keep up with you all. Chair, if you excuse me for one moment, I need to go and put uh, a, a jacket on because I'm getting cold, but I will still be able to hear the conversation. OK, OK, that's fine. Um, right, we will move on to um, item three, which is... 210692. This is a property seven vicarage gardens, and this is a first floor side extension. Okay. Can we go through that again, please, Yola? That's um. So this is quite close, I think, to the the old vicarage, isn't it? That part of that. I'm not trying to see where the actual location is. Okay. Um, Councillor Moorhood, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm, I see they've already got the ground floor extension and it looks as if they want to build above it. That's right. My yeah. query is, I'm, I was rather quick looking through those things. I'm not clear. It seems to be on the side that's adjacent to another property next door. And I'm wondering whether it's going to um, be overbearing from that point of view, if there are windows on there. I'm afraid it whipped by rather quickly then, so I couldn't quite decide what was going on. We can certainly have another look at it. Um, I noticed when I looked at this on the, um, the website today, there are three neighbours who've put approvals for it in the sense that they are, they're comfortable and practically recommending it to us from that point yeah. of view. So I would say that, that what, what you just said, that concern, I would say is certainly not, not the case that, from that, that point of view. my concerns then, yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. Any other members have any points to, to mention on this item? No. Should we have another quick quick look at it, please, Yolo, if that's okay? I see Councillor Taylor's just raised his hand as I as I said that. Could we have another quick look? I'm trying to, to establish exactly where it is on Vicarage Gardens. I find it quite difficult to. Okay. Yeah, so it is. The, the big part at the top is where the vicarage is. That's right. It's right at that kind of end of the cul-de-sac, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it, there's already a, a first floor extension 
Um, and it's it's basically going above that. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Thank you, Yola. Councillor Taylor, you're very patient there. Thank you. If you'd like to go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. And um, while I appreciate the, the support that this um, uh, extension, first floor extension, uh, has got from its neighbours, um, I'm, I'm troubled by first floor extensions with flat roofs. Um, not so much because of the aesthetics, uh, although there is a lot to be desired uh, from that point of view, uh, but because uh, flat roofs are, are notoriously difficult to uh, to 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 keep um, to, to keep waterproof, uh, I, I I've got a feeling that the uh, that the officers may uh, not wish to to approve approve this one uh, because I think for, from a design guidance point of view um, it's uh, and it's a 1960s house but it's a very 1960s sort of extension I, I don't think they would be recommending that you, you you have a flat roof extension on a on a first floor is that because um, of the size of it cancer Taylor used because it is quite an extensive um it's it's the very very blocky appearance um yeah it, it makes you know it's unapologetic in that from that point of view it's an unapologetic um uh application in terms of uh, you know the, the the style of the building um I'm, I'm not going to be voting against it but i, I can't support it thank you thank you councillor taylor councillor heath you've raised your hands to have a say on this one please go ahead thank you chair um i, I agree with councillor taylor and i disagree with him first, <laughs> just get a bit of balance here you know yeah um, okay first of all uh, flat roofs now can be made very watertight with modern products. There's a new, well, it's not that new really, but it's new to Great Britain, um, called a rubber roof. But it, and if you get the industrial quality, uh, it probably lasts out last tiles, uh, they, uh, they go for 50 years easily. So if, yes, if it's a felt roof, I agree. So if we do approve it, we perhaps could add that, not a felt finish. But that's a building regulation, so I don't know whether we've got permission to do that. So that's where I disagree. Um, agree, uh, a flat roof subject to obviously the right roofing uh, on a ground floor is fine really, it's quite normal, but I do agree on, on a second floor, it does tend to look a bit odd. Um, so I think that being, being that strange design, it may, be, it may have been done because the, the residents don't want another bit of extra um, section of height, because bear in yeah. mind that the good side of flat roofs is it doesn't take the skyline away you have got a lower ridge basically so there is an advantage there so it's a question of overbearing or do you want a flat roof um it's a tricky one but i, I personally think it does look a bit odd and as the rest of them in the road um although we haven't got a picture of the road unfortunately but I, those are whoever's uh ward it is maybe a, if you're one of them could tell me and I don't think the other ones have got uh, flat roofs next to have they so no. it's out of character so I'm not happy again again on that with with Gary Taylor I think that the design has been quite a lot to um to improve on to be honest okay thank you for that Councillor Heath Councillor Moorhood please go ahead thank you chair um yes I agree um it would be preferable to have um a roof which gave a nod to the main structure roof. Um, but I just, I don't know whether we can actually specify that. Uh, but adding to what Councillor Heath said, I was going to mention as well that um, you could have such a thing as a glass fibre flat roof and they are excellent yeah. and they don't yeah. um, leak. But that's not part of what we're here to do. <laughs> yes. well, it's certainly an education, this committee. So thank you for, for sharing. Um, Councillor Taylor, you were uh, you raised your hand. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I. Sorry, at first glance, I didn't see the uh, uh, the detail on the elevation. Um, I was looking to see whether there are other reasons. I think that they're looking to put a Velux window in 
um, above the, uh, uh, the above this. So it must be in the hallway in the other part of the building, yeah. uh, the, the existing part of the building. So uh, so that might be one of the reasons that they want to have a flat roof. Um, but I, I, I could I could imagine that you know that there would be a way forward if they were to instead put a pitch roof on the side where they could bring light into the into the hallway still. Yeah. Um, but uh, in but the, the reason for for um, putting my hand up again is it is this is a fiberglass finish flat roof is specified on the plans. Thank you. Okay. So okay. Just to add that detail. ERP, it's called. Fiberglass, okay. Yeah. Glass, as I said, reinforced glass fiber. It cert certainly is an education. Okay, so we've still got no feather forward in the sense that um, um, we we haven't we haven't had a uh, proposal. So is anyone minded to? There's been uh, lots of statements of I'm not comfortable with, but we're no further forward as to where we're taking this. So has anyone else got anything in, else to add on this point? I. I yeah. Well, I'm going to come to you, right. Councillor Heath, but Councillor Foden just picked you at the post. So go ahead, yeah. Councillor Foden. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm ha quite happy with this um, proposed um, application and I'm quite happy to propose that we approve it. Um, the reasons are it doesn't increase the the footprint of the house at all, of the building at all. and. I think it's good that they're using the space above their their um, ground the the ground floor extension, um, and then with the um, the roof materials that has just been spoken about, then I'm quite happy to to, to propose that we accept it. Thank you. Accept no objection. Is that is that your thoughts? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Councillor Heath, you wanted to come in then, so go ahead. Um, I probably don't now. I'm not quite sure if I'm of that persuasion, and I think <laughs> at the moment I'm actually abstaining. I might even be against. Well, no, you wanted to say something, so I, I was. That's no, why that's I was bringing you in. But okay, that's fine. Thanks, Councillor Moorhood. I just sorry. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to second the proposal. Okay, thank cool. you, Councillor Moorhood. Um, so, Councillor Heath, I, I, I brought you in as you, you, you put your hand up to, to speak to, to the last item, but that's fine if you've, um, if you've changed your mind. That's absolutely fine. That's fine. OK, well, we have um, a proposal in front of us and it has been seconded. Hopefully you've made a note of that, Yola. So we will, unless there's any other hands raised to make a comment, we'll go to the vote, please. So that's accept the item um, as is, no objection. Can I see a show of hands, please? Any abstentions? Any against? Okay, thank you. So that's majority um, passed, thank you. Right, um, we go on to the next item. Um, and that is uh, 2100733, this is 33 Holcomb Road. Raising of the roof, it's all about roofs tonight, um, to form additional accommodation and associated works. And this is an area of Holcomb Road that we've been in before members in the last couple of meetings, actually, um, where there's uh, bungalows that have a really good view down to the sea. And I think this is a house showing it that it wants to have an even better view of the sea from that point of view. Can we run through that again, please? So, uh, Yellow, thanks. Just one more time. Thanks. So, that's the before, a bungalow. And this is the proposed. Okay, thank you. Um, I noted when I had a look at this today, we have objections with. Uh, and, and next door neighbour um, quite concerned about overlooking loss of privacy and staircases actually overlooking the property as well. So I'd, I thought I'd mention that just at, at this stage. 
Okay, Councillor Heath, you have your hand raised first. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Um, is, it, is, it, is it number eight? It's 33 Holcomb, Holcomb Road. That's the one along by Minadab, isn't it? That bit. It's the, it's the, ro it's the road going up the back of, of Minadab and there's, yeah, there's a, a right, row of bungalows which I think are gradually because, being developed as time goes on. Yes, because yeah. members might not realise that road is split in two, so that's the, the Timmouth end of it. Yeah. Because it was one of mine. I did drive down there last week because I, I couldn't work out what they were trying to do. Yeah. And I can see now what it is that, the, as you're right, they are wanting to have a, be, a, a better view. Um, there's a block of houses along that just section. I think it's about four houses. Yeah. Um, the next door neighbour that's probably um, put an objection. It is very close. Yeah. Within about just over a metre, I think. So they certainly would be overlooked. Um, for an aesthetic point of view, it doesn't look good at all because it's you've got the ordinary two stories, which is one from the road. And when you go in the back gardens of those houses, they're two stories because it's going down a steep hill to the cliffs, isn't it? Yeah, that's so, right. So this will be effectively three story now yeah. uh, from the back and two story from the road. But although it won't be showing quite so much from the front, because the way they build it, the roof, as far as I can see from the plan, does come forward and affects some of the front of the house. So it's going to be a little bit like a castle effect, if you follow me on that one. Yeah. Um, the, the other ones are low, the other ones are high. Um, to me, apart from obviously there are complaints, which is we must take on board, but we look at it as a planning thing. They'll be the only one that's hired the roof. Although we've approved one hiring a roof, this is a different situation. This is in a quite a close block and to me I think it will spoil the symmetry of that whole section I'm not really happy with that at all and I don't think any design change would make a lot of difference I just don't think it's fair to other people to have this sort of very large suddenly appearing next to them when it hasn't ever been like this in the past I know governments are in favour of building very on top of everything but they haven't got to live there have they that's my comment <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, Councillor Heath. Any other uh, members want to come in on this one? No, oh, Councillor Taylor, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, having objected to the previous application on account of its roof, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, w I want to be consistent. Um, <laughs> 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 So, so I, I, I don't, again, I think the design of the of the building uh, is poor. Uh, I think from the from the front, it, it looks really weird. Uh, you've got um, some small windows, and then you've got a big expanse of brickwork above it, and then you've got a um, the, the the eaves detail. Um, it, it all looks a bit lost with a couple of uh, Velux windows, uh, but the, the the front, I guess, isn't the isn't the thing that most of the neighbours are objecting to. They're objecting to the overlooking, um, and yeah. uh, yes, I think one of our one of the close neighbours has just had planning application approved. I thought I think we thought a bit that looking like two sentry boxes have been added to the roof detail. That's right. Yeah, um, it's in that same. I think it's either next door yeah, or one. Or so, something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not really three stories at the back, though it is, but it is going to be, you know, two and a half stories out of the yeah. ground. You can see from the dotted line of the rear across the rear elevation where the where the land does lie. Mm -hmm. um, so, so my main objection would be the overlooking that you get, not just from the roof being raised, but by the rear of the house being pushed backwards as well uh, with those. Um, uh, gable uh, shaped uh, windows uh, in in that particular room <coughs> and also an external balcony so a balcony at that height <coughs> albeit that um, I'm trying to can't really work it out from the from this yes I so the balcony must sit <coughs> between the recessed or the gable that doesn't extend forwards and the one that does, because you can't see it from the side elevation. Yeah. So, uh, so, but it would it would still overlook other properties <clears throat> from from a substantial height. So, from yeah. that point of view, 
Um, I would have I would definitely have objections to 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 this scheme um, uh, in terms of over overbearing and over overlooking. Yeah, I'm, I must admit, I'm quite happy to toss my hat into the ring on this one. I was concerned about that um, loss of privacy as well. I do think it's I can understand the um, the residents wanting to maximise the view. It's a lovely high spot. Um, but I think there is there's due consideration for um, the immediate neighbours, and I think that is that is a concern that I think we are forced to take into consideration in this one. And I, I do agree on uh, your points, Councillor Taylor. There. Um, any other members want to to make any comments on this one at all? No. no? Okay. Well, I'm I'm happy to. Um, to take a proposal forward and say that we recommend refusal on the basis of um, overlooking, um, loss of privacy and overbearing, I think, from that point of view from the, from the neighbours. Um, although I, I am the chair, I do need to have someone to second that proposal. So if any, <laughs> just uh, quite a few hands, so um, thank you. Um, so are we... Um, does anyone have any other points they want to raise on that? I think we've kind of clarified that from that point of view. So we will go to the vote on that one, please. So to reject this um, application on the above said items. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Lowther, joining with us. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. No, that's all right. That's fine. I'm being quiet now. <laughs> I know you are. Thank you. But your input so always, is always valuable. Thank you. Um, right, let us move on then to the next item. Um, not quite such a high area, this one. Uh, Sherwell's close, so this is on the way to Dawlish Warren. And we're dealing with another outbuilding, it's a garage this, garage this time. So it's 2100737. Rougemont, Sherwell's Close, Dawlish Warren, and detached garage and workshop to the front. So these are properties that have got very large gardens that go down to the, the road. Um, and this, they're proposing to put a, there you go, there's your the large driveway. And so they're where that kind of parked car is. And I'm wondering if that's what's going in the garage and, and the workshop is going to be doing a grand design on that car, perhaps. I'm not sure, but it's... Um, it does say um, workshop, doesn't it? So that's maybe I'm just making making a story out of it. I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Yola. Um, Councillor Moorhead, please Thank go you. ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, they are large gardens and there's plenty of room for this, but we're talking about a workshop as well as a garage. And it looks as if it's going to be in full view of everybody else. I don't know why they decided that they want it right at the bottom of the garden, but I don't suppose that's a planning issue. It just doesn't seem logical to me or, or to be in line of sight of your neighbours as well. But unless there are lots of objections from the neighbours, I suppose, um, you know, if they're not worried, then I shouldn't be. I didn't, I did have a look and there aren't any objections as of today, but I did, I do know the area and there are other properties that have outbuildings, garages, etc. almost as a, a boundary defence, as it were, at the, the bottom of their drives, you walk past those to get in. So I don't know if that's a, become part of the, the fashion, should I say, for Sherwell's Close. I don't know, but um, I take your point. Councillor Wrigley. Chair, you're taking some of the points I was about to say, actually, because there are a, a number of... Uh... Now, so it's an unusual little road. It was a, a lovely little road with about a dozen houses in it that was in the middle of open countryside that is now, and, and all of the houses were right at the top, uh, tops of their gardens. The road is still unadopted, so it's a private road. Mm. Um, they now have a massive housing estate on, <laughs> on either side of the road. So behind, immediately behind their, their houses are, are, are the new houses um, on either side. So it's an area where the character has changed tremendously over the last 10 years. Yeah. 
but many of them do have um, fairly substantial buildings at the bottom of the garden by the road. It makes sense to put the garage by the road, it then gives you a bit of privacy in that front garden behind the garage. You do want the garage down at the bottom there by the road, not up by the house. Uh, it, it, it makes more sense for many, many, in many ways, I would suggest. All the houses along there are different. No two are the same in any way, shape or form. <laughs> um, and and um, I think this would be perfectly in keeping and I would propose no objection. OK, thank you. Uh, any other? Councillor Heath, please go ahead. Uh, Thank you. A little clarification, looking at this other map on the other screen here. Um, the grey bit, obviously, which is the road, that, correct, is a private road? Yep. Yeah. And that's the only garage with those four houses along there. The others haven't, doesn't seem to have been built. So obviously, we will set a precedent in one way. Um, but there again, it is right at the end. Um, and it is a private road, isn't it? So, and it's and they don't seem to have any other garages, as far as I can see. I think some of some of them have got outbuildings. Certainly, I'm not sure if they're used as garages yeah, or, or what. Okay, so, yeah. might not be on the on this drawing. Perhaps they don't put outbuildings on if it, if they haven't had planning permission. But I might have leafleted there in the past. That's how I got to know. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's um, all I'll say. Okay, well, yeah, I guess it's not that bad, really, is it? Okay, thank you for that, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, I think uh, slide number two shows uh, the house um, almost opposite at the end of the road uh, with uh, a structure in the front garden. Um, and uh, yes, I, 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 can, I can certainly see the need for it. I wouldn't want my uh, what looks like a 60s American muscle car on slot mags <laughs> underneath that car. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that to out, out in the open for, for, for too long. Um, my only observation is that um, the uh, the applicant has uh, on uh, slide four kindly put the uh, drainage um, plan in uh, yeah. for for and I'm guessing that's the foul drainage run uh, so the existing drain run from the house to the um, to the main strain uh, runs directly underneath the garage that's not too much of a problem but um, if it is the main strain uh, it's only a meter away from the from the main strain to the side of the wall um, and i think oh, southwest right. water might have something to say about that mm. but that's really not a matter for us it's a matter for um, the applicant and southwest water to uh, uh, to come to a Perhaps it's something we can highlight from that point yeah. of view as a yeah. Yeah. Your eagle, one of the eagle-eyed members of the uh, Dawlish Planning Committee noted that from that point of view. So, OK, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, so we have a proposal. We don't have a seconder for that. Is anyone minded to, to um, second Councillor Wrigley's proposal? I'm, I'm comfortable with it, so I'm happy to. But uh, Councillor Moorhood, I can see you waving your hand. You're happy, you're happy to you're happy to second that thank you well we will go to um the vote on that if that's okay please to accept us as uh, set out thank you thank you did right. we did we add uh, before you go on um uh yeah did we did we add that overrider about the drains to that your that was no. that was that we 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 added that in. Um, that was as far as I took it. It was, but um, you're you're shaking your head, Yola. Did you add the the? I'd noted, but when you read out the, what it was going to be, it was as is. But I can yeah. put it in if that if that's the understanding and that's everyone's understanding that they that voted was, on. That's that no was problem. my understanding. Yeah, yes. no, that's fine. Because we can't enforce on that. We can't kind no. of make it as a condition, but we can say there was a just so a, you know a, the concerns regarding the drainage. Yes. Hmm. The position of the uh, position, position of, of the, drain, the uh, yeah position of the drain relative to the proposed. There we go. Position of the building, new building. Okay, thank you. Right, let us go on then to we're back at Mount Pleasant Road. We're we're not seeing the same item, ladies and gentlemen, but we're back at Mount Pleasant Road, twenty one double o two five seven three Mount Pleasant Road, just across the road from the campsite where this all started. Um, this is a roof extension conversion, including raising of the ridge height, 
hip to gable extensions, dormer windows, single storey extension, balcony with terraces to rear, reconfiguration of garage and raising of roof and associated work. So quite a large um, proposal um, for this property. We might need to go through this a couple of times, Yola, if that's OK, because there's a lot to, to have a look at. Hopefully members have had a look. So very much a stepped balcony, a, a bungalow, as it were. But and taking advantage of the estuary views, I would imagine, from that um, side there. That's quite an ex there's quite a, an increase of um, the development. Okay. Quite a lot to take in with that one. We might be coming back to having another look at that uh, in a moment, Yola, if that's all right, but we'll um, come back to members if that's okay. So, um, any thoughts? Ooh. We seem to have lost Councillor Heath in the fog. He's back. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I was, I must admit, I was concerned in the same way as we were looking at that property. This is obviously all about, again, looking at a view um, of the estuary. So it's uh, quite a substantial um, extension, but is it affecting other people? I think is the, is the question. Councillor Taylor, you have your hand raised. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, this is a very, I'm sorry to say, there's a very disappointing application in terms of the, the um, quality of the plans. Um, we're, we're fine with regard to uh, the uh, existing elevations, which uh, have, have, have been drawn, drawn up by an architect, uh, and for the existing for the garage and for the new garage. But for the house itself, I mean, these look like these plans look like work in progress. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the first one that you come to, um, the, the, you know, the, there's a new wall or what looks like a new wall or perhaps it's a bit of a double trimmer. So, OK, so it's I think it's something to do with the roof structure. Um, doesn't even look straight. Uh, but now. I, I'd, I'd, I'd give credit for somebody having a fair go, but the fact is that these plans are supposed to, if, the, if approval were given, are supposed to be followed to the lesser. But so if you put in a bent double trimmer, you're yeah. going you're gonna to have to put in a bent double trimmer, otherwise you, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be uh, you wouldn't be um, conforming to your planning uh, your your permitted application, um, okay. but. I would be very surprised, actually, to if 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 our if Teambridge officers don't um, pass this back to the applicant to say, um, sorry, we're going to need uh, more detail on these plans. Yeah. But if you have a look at the windows, they're just in outline. There's no there's no yeah. no no real detail on them. Yeah. And I, the, the, and but in terms of what it is that the applicant is looking for. Um, I don't think, I mean, if you look at the last slide, um, the door's crooked. <laughs> it, it's, he needs to have some, uh, he or she, the applicant need, needs to, I think, take more time with the plans to get them finessed so that we can really see what it is that it, it represented so that we can have a reasonable look at what's uh, at what at what we at what we can see. As it is, though, I, I couldn't support this application. I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. Any other any other comments from from members at all? No, I'm 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 just not clear. And I, my, I agree with you, Councillor Taylor, um, that I'm not I'm not clear. It is what it is. Um, 
Councillor Moorhood, I see you have your hand raised. So before I start babbling, carry on, please do. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I'm thinking along the same lines. I think that I wouldn't be feel in a position to make any um, comments on this application and that I, I would like to see a much more detailed application come back to us in order to be able to really consider it in detail. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, I'm happy to propose from the chair that we, we, we do reject this um, application on that basis, that we're, we're not comfortable with the plans before us. We can't make a, an informed decision based on that. I think that's a fair, fair point to say. Um, and we, we, we need more detail and more specification, I think, from that point of view. Is everyone comfortable with that? Excellent. Could I ask for someone to second my Councillor Moorhood? Very quick on the draw. Thank you. So we have a proposal and a seconder. So we will vote to um, ask for more clarification, I think, from that point of view. Thank you. That's unanimous. OK, now let's go on to still got a couple more, I'm afraid I'll try my best. Um, so we've got 210683, but we're looking here at a, a tree, um, a TPOs, TPOs, pruning and felling of ashes, oaks and chestnuts. And I don't know if members have had a look at this on the website, but there's some really useful um, videos that the uh, landowner has uh, posted on there so you can literally see um, the trees and she's very concerned about them um, there's a couple of little red x's on the on the road there so you're not really going to see where, where they are but yeah thank you Yola well done <laughs> um, and they're, they're trees that are particularly lining the road they're Cockwood Hill going on the on the way just past St Mary's cottages and the landowner is concerned that her public liability insurance is in danger of being used to a substantial effect um, and her arboriculturalist has advised her to uh, to prune some because some large branches overlooking the road and there's some that are actually dead trees so it is about rooting out the dead trees as well um, so she she did a little videoed walking tour to show us what they were on the website which is quite useful to watch um, any comments from from members at all my feelings are okay, Councillor Taylor. My feelings are that we we take this as a um, a uh, as we do very often, and we're very often minded to say that um, we obviously wish the um, Teambridge arboriculturist to make sure he's comfortable with this application. Um, but I see no reason to to reject this if a, a trained arboriculturist has already had a look and is is comfortable that work needs doing. Then who am I to 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 say differently? But Councillor Taylor, you're next, and then Councillor Moorhead, and then Councillor Lowther. Um, okay, yeah, sorry, I, I tried to view the videos uh, through the planning portal, but uh, I couldn't get them get to work on, on my iPad. So um, I'm just really going by the other sort of more static information that, that we have here. Um, yeah. For clarification, uh, are we talking about trees at point X? or at the two points X, or are we talking about trees along a line between the two points? They are, there's, there are, there are about four videos that I saw this afternoon. And there are, I would say between those two points, there are some over leaning trees. There's one tree that's leaning quite substantially that needs to be cut down, it's dead. There are, it isn't the whole, whole row of trees, there's just intermittent bits and pieces that need to be addressed and large branches that need to be cut down but they are particularly trees that are on that on the road area and the concern is that they're going to fall could actually fall on a car could fall on someone walking along the the road all right uh, thank you chair uh, it would uh, i think the, the character of the road is all about the the uh, the tree cover there and uh, and and while um, you know, there, there is always some danger that, that a tree will, will shed a bough or perhaps even uh, topple over. Uh, I, would, I would hate to see the sort of wanton destruction of the tree cover. It is a, it is a lane after all. And, um, you know, it, the, the trees kiss at the top from either side. Um, so I, I, 
I would certainly welcome a, a decision by the arbitral uh, officer uh, on this because I think the it, there is the risk that um, a uh, uh, chainsaw happy um, uh, chappy uh, might uh, <laughs> might uh, might uh, chop off more than the, more than, more, than, more than we really want. Okay, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Moorhood, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, those trees which have TPOs, or it might be a block TPO for that matter, doesn't mean that things can't be done to them, but it does mean that it needs professional advice, as you were saying, from the uh, Timbridge District Council's arboricultural officer. But I would just add in that there, there are problems with ash trees. In fact, Timbridge are having to spend a fortune over the next year or two yeah. removing them from roadsides because they are very likely to succumb to ash dieback and be dangerous. As well as that, of course, um, there are there's legislation regarding how uh, low you can have a branch or a shrub or whatever over a public highway. So mm -hmm. this might be a mix of things. This could be a mix of meeting legislation, dealing with dying or diseased trees and or um, general pruning and maintenance of trees. So I'm sure that with prof the proper professional advice, there, there will be a proper, a, a reasonable conclusion to this. Okay, thank you for that. I'm, I'm comfortable with what I've seen. It's exactly how I took it, Councillor Moorhood, that you've just mentioned. I'm happy to uh, propose that we we accept this as um, with the proviso that uh, the the Teambridge District Council's arbitral um, officer is involved and approves the the, the plan um, that we take this as uh, we accept this plan as as it is. But but with that with that proviso, can I ask if anyone's happy to second that, Councillor Lowther? You are whip quick. You're happy to you're happy to to second that proposal. Well, you want to say wouldn't... something? I was in the queue. Yeah, you are now. I am. And I was in the queue to second it. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Did you want to say anything else or are you happy with that? No, no, I'm happy with the wording that you've, you've said. Okay, that's fine. Um, then we will go to a vote, if that's okay, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. And if you can get to see the videos, Councillor Taylor, I think you'll um, you know what I mean. <laughs> OK, <laughs> okay. Um, we're almost there. We have uh, one more and then we're looking at appeals. So Friday night is not all lost at this point, mm, but we so... do have 2100686. And this is Cofton Country Holiday Park. We're back with the um, um, holiday uh, proposal as it were eight new static lodges with decking area 16 parking spaces and access so this is in the, the Cofton um, Country Park Star Cross and I noted this is literally the next tier down from the um, planning permission that was gained 18 months ago two years ago I think so the higher you can see the lodges in that higher point in the and there, those were the most recently granted to this uh, to this site. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> These lodges are either three bedroomed or two bedrooms, and they're described as cabins with. Um, they have decking around two sides of them, the length, one length mm -hmm. and the, the ends of them as well. Okay. We've had a look at the pictures. The members um, happy or unhappy with anything they see? Councillor Moorhood, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. I haven't looked at this one in detail. Um, I have a few comments. Are these meant to be second homes or are they holiday homes for um, renting weekly, monthly, whatever. Yeah. And whatever they are, again, going back to sewage and surface water, uh, 
are there specific plans included in here for um, the slow release of, of surface water um, and maybe for septic tanks, drainage or whatever, or is this all going straight into the main sewage system again? And if they are for sale as second homes, what are the restrictions on them for the, the number of weeks in a year when they can be used? Lots of questions there. And I know from when I was having a look at this item, I might be able to help with some of them. They've got plans for French drains for okay. the... If, I'm glad that means something to you because again, it was, I've been learning about roofs today and this is about drains as well. Um, but there, is, there are plans for... Um, there are plans for um, um, yeah the the an ecology plan. They are going to be on the. They're not going to be sold or as holiday homes. They're for rental, as the other cabins and the previous development are. So they're for weekly or fortnightly hire by people during the holiday season. Um, and there's a, an ecology plan that goes with them, along with a planting plan. So I don't think I've answered all the questions, but hopefully that's a starting point from that point of view. I think you've answered them all, except... Um, don't I, ask me to describe a, a French drain, that's all no, I ask. It's just another major, larger version of a soak away, if you like. Yeah. Um, they're sometimes okay. called Dutch drains. Something um, else to add is that they've got photovoltaic arrays on the roof as well. Oh, so um, they have got, that's why they've got that kind of slant. So they are able to contribute to the local, to the uh, electricity when the sun's shining as well, which is, I think, quite a positive. So the only other, only other question I had was, how many <laughs> weeks a year are they going to be allowed to That's, be I'm afraid I don't know, but I think, I don't know, Cofton does, does it, it does have a, a, a set period when it's not open, I believe, but um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll have a look that while Councillor Taylor is uh, is speaking. You're, ne you're next to speak, Councillor Taylor. Um. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I'd actually like a, a, this was a late item and it wasn't, I don't think, on uh, Yola's initial um, send out of, uh, of, of uh, <laughs> slides, if I'm correct. Um, so if we could run through the slides again, please, Yola, I'd be very grateful. Um, check, did you say this, this was actually a step down from That's existing right. chalets? Yes, it's the next section down. So they're re so they're redeveloping an area which is currently used for camping or for the yes. sighting of motor caravans. Yeah, I think it's I think it's uh, for camping they were using, but you can see that it was obviously the intention that something was going to go there because of the the kind of pathways and what have you going to it there. You can see the kind of um, the, the terracing effect, as it were, of the land there. Well, from that point of view in that uh, chair, I, um, I'm, I'm relieved that, that, uh, with, that the development isn't marching further and further uh, up, up the hill. Yeah. Um, and but but on the other hand i think it's a shame in a way that um, we are losing some of the some of the land um that w that was otherwise used for for camping yeah. um but i think uh, given given that there then there may be other fields coming forward for camping yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. quite possibly <laughs> <that> accommodation will, <laughs> will be taken up out, uh, else, elsewhere um yeah. I mean, they are quite large lodges as well. I mean, they they are quite substantial. Some of them are three bedrooms, some of them are two bedroom, and each of them have two parking spaces with them as well. So that's they're quite substantial kind of, um, but they're quite spaced well, I think, in the um, in the landscape from that I, point. I of think view. If, I think if they if they if they are if they can be um, mandated for for rental, then uh, I wouldn't have an objection. Okay, so they're not to not be sold for holiday homes you're talking about, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's something we can consider if we get to the proposal stage. Councillor Foden, you have your hand raised, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with Councillor Taylor's um, last comment that to be sure that they're just for rental only. 
Um, and then I'd like to add that I like the design. Um, I'm, I'm happy with this application and I'm really happy that they've, um, that they're looking ahead um, to help with the climate emergency and that they've got the um, solar panels on top of them. And I, I like the design and I'm, I'm happy to, to say yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Councillor Heath. Uh, thank you, I'm struggling to find the uh, application. It disappeared off my other screen. Anyway, um, I can see the, where they've got the drawing. They've got trees dotted around. Yeah. It seems that they've just um, pulled out the ones that are already there and circled them, which makes us look as if they're planting loads of trees. I'm not sure if that is the case. So if we were actually, because it's quite a void area there, I'd sort of to say, let's go ahead with this one. They have got an ecology plan, Councillor Heath, with it, but um, I, oh, there's, there's a lot to, there is actually an awful lot of um, things to read on this one. Yeah. But there are, I think there are some arbocultural implications because by, by virtue of the fact that there were more trees when it was a camping field, I think there, there are some are going to be going and they're just bringing others in. So right. I think that is, but they're balancing that out. From that I point. think uh, it would be great if we could add um, an overrider by saying, we would like to see um, more more planting of trees because these are the, these are the times to do it. We all, everyone's shouting, "How can we stop the carbon?" You know. Well, there are now scientists working on some hairbrain ideas of sucking it out of the air with a hairdryer, as it were. Um, the best thing to do is plant a tree. Trees lock up carbon, but if we don't do them now, they won't be any good because they take about thirty years before they really have much impact. So, I'd like to see us if we could. And we're not necessarily content with the number of trees they're going to plant. I don't know how you'd word that, but there we go. I think, well, it, it's a difficult one. They are they are accommodating because there's only so much space. And, and I'm certainly I don't I agree with what you're saying, um, but there's only so much space that they can put the plants in, they, the, the trees in. They can't put them too close to actually shade out the photovoltaic arrangement on the actual roofs but I think they are planning to do as much as they can with hedgerows and with extra trees but I, I take your point it could be that could they consider other planting in on the way to the properties yeah. or I'm not sure. There's also the bit as uh, I think it was uh, Gary Taylor said there's the bit at the back where they do have trees um, if they did plant a few more that would make it less likely than they want planning permission there two years time so maybe that is a crafty way we can get a step ahead of them for a change and suggest maybe at the back of the site or something. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Wrigley, um, planning plans all round here. Okay. This is a, a, a field I know well. There is a public footpath that actually runs through the top of this field. And it's, it's and uh, uh, over the last 20 years, I've, I've walked through this field many, many, many times and seen its evolution. Mm. It was originally just quite a steep, slopey field with nothing on there at all. It's been sculpted and sculptured and the uh, um, cabins on the height put in. I was quite relieved when I saw that this application was for an infill of the existing space and not an extension uh, out into the, out, outwards. Yeah. Most of the camping within this site is, of course, in the fields out towards uh, Orchard Lane, uh, towards uh, St Mary's Cottage Way. Yeah. which is where there are acres and acres of, of green fields that they use for uh, a, a traditional pitch your tent. Uh, mm. and I'm sure there's plenty of space there. Um, so whilst I'm sort of concerned about the sort of the, the ever increasing size of, of, of all these places, I think this one is, is sensible and this particular site is I'll give them credit. They are always taking measures to do what they can. They have a um, a biomass boiler on site for all their heating. They have various other sort of uh, relatively sound ecological uh, attempts. Um, I would like to agree with the encouragement to see them plant more trees because that um, reduces noise and shields the uh, shields the place as well as making it pleasant and uh, being ecologically sound as well. So. All in all, I'd say a, uh, I, I would go for a no objection, but please plant more trees. <laughs> okay. Yola, you 
quickly come in and then I'll bring Councillor Moorhead in. Um, just to let you know, it's just hit nine o'clock. So I know you're on the cusp of a vote, but you do need to just a vote to extend just to finish off with this one. And then it's just noting the appeal. OK, so can I see a show of hands to just extend, hopefully, just a little while? Thank you. OK, um, Councillor Moorhood, I'll bring you in next, please. Go ahead. I like the way that uh, this design is just not another row of things. They're actually following the contours of the land. Yeah. It means that it's also more private for each of these places. Um, unfortunately, it also means that we're going to get a lot more traffic in the area, although from that site, people should be able to walk to the beach and so forth and the country park. Yeah. Um, very, very pleased to see that there are some nods towards um, being more eco-friendly. One thing I would have loved to have seen would be them uh, putting an electric charging point somewhere within their site. We can't really specify that. but um, Well, it could be that we, we add to our, our notes that we would, we would like to see that and we'd like to see more trees in the um, ecological plan. I think that's a reasonable, a reasonable nod. We can't mandate it, but we can, we could say that that is something that we would look favourably on as well. <laughs> you know, they have a, a large area of land, so they could, they don't have to plant the trees right be, between the properties and overshadowing the um, photovoltaic cells. Uh, there are lots of other places where they could enhance the greenery, so to speak. But yes, an electric charging point would really put the icing on the cake. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, Councillor Heath, with your eco hat, I suspect. Yeah, I feel very embarrassed that um, Val Moore had got there and I didn't say it, so uh, apologies <laughs> on that one. Um, but I absolutely agree. <laughs> A holiday camp is ideal for a, a charging point. People are going on long journeys. In 10 years' time, there's going to be a lot more electric cars. Yeah. I think we should make quite a strong point rather than just we've noted. Uh, as a holiday destination with electric car, this is a vital uh, infrastructure that they need to add to it. Thank you. Okay. We can't mandate it at this stage. Oh, we, can we, can, we can at least say it as strongly <laughs> as that so that we can see how it goes from that. Yeah. Um, can I take it from that that you're you're giving us a proposal, Councillor Heath? Because that sounds awfully like one to me. Uh, well, okay, if you want it as a proposal that we accept it with that uh, proviso that we've added, um, if we could uh, hint or suggest perhaps a, a few more trees. On Include the more trees on site plus um, an electric charging an electric charging and, point and a double one, I reckon, because they they normally come in. Well, they do. They, well, Devon County Council are doing double ones, and I assume that's how they come. So a double char one isn't much amongst that site. Let's be honest. Right. Um, so uh, yeah, that could be electric vehicles, couldn't we? Yeah. There we go. Well, we we pitch it at two. They might come down with one. I've I've, I've heard of these kind of negotiations. Good way of Thank it. you. Okay, Yola, are you are you happy with that uh, that wording? Uh, but the notes I have, if you would like them. But, no, that's fine. Um, we'd like it to be the we we um, we want it to be mandated for holiday rental. Yeah. We would like them to include more trees and shrubs on site. We appreciate the 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 uh, eco plan, but more trees, please, and also um, electric charging points. A double. Do you want it speci specified as double or just would encourage the, uh, the addition um, of electric charging point points? Plural. I think that would be good. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think that's good. We can't that, mandate right? any of them, but it would be a good thing to, to put, put a wish list from that point of view, I think. Well, I'm happy to second your proposal there, um, Councillor Heath, if that's okay. And I think I might have just picked you at the post, Councillor Lather. I apologise. True. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't. I only just looked down and, and saw your your hand raised. Then, so apologies. Um, but I think we've we've come to the point where we've we're on agreement of this this last item. Um, so we will take a vote on it, please, ladies and gentlemen. Vote for approval with the uh, aforementioned provisos. Thank you. That's unanimous. Okay, we now come to. The last item, which is to, I don't think we've got anything to see on this one, have we, Yola? It's, um, no, it's just a note. And this is to note Appeal 21008. This is 8 Oak Hill, which, if you recall, ladies and gentlemen, was a 
two story, if I remember, um, extension to a property at the rear of it. I think the, the, it was a rear extension, first and second floor, um, and it kind of looked out over the Luscombe Estate on, from Oak Hill. Um, and they've got a, quite a substantial appeal document on the, the website for it. So they've obviously employed somebody to, um, to look at this in detail for them. But at this stage, we're just noting that Councillor Moorhood, I see you've got your, your hand raised, so please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. I was just wondering, Yola, whether we actually have any information as to why it was rejected at Tunbridge, because we saw no problem with it. It, it wasn't overbearing on, or it wasn't overshadowing anybody else. And I just wondered what their grounds were. They must have some strong reason. I did um, look at it this afternoon, the, Yola. If you yeah, I can, yeah, I can forward the document around um, yeah. so you can have a look. Yeah. yeah. It, it it seemed to be one of the pro, one of the pro provisors was that it was overbearing on the neighbours, but it was on the rear. It's not looking at all the, any neighbours. And I think yeah, I, I can't see Luscombe Castle from there. I think it was from the lack of lack of sunlight as well. There was lack of light or something like that. Lack of light on one side, but I'm not sure about where it's positioned. Whether that's true or not, but I'm not. Our decision was that we were we were relatively comfortable with it, and there were no objections from the neighbours, if I recall. So I think we were we, yeah. we recommended approval from from our point of view. I was just just surprised, and I'm wondering what they'd spotted that we hadn't, you know. Yeah. But if you'd be happy to to share that that document, Yola, that's probably the quicker way to do it. If that's all right. Yeah. Okay. So can we just take a quick uh, um, vote to to note the uh, the appeal that's that's gone in? Thank you. Right. That brings us to the end of our first Dawlish Town Council Friday night session of planning so thank you thank you very much for uh for joining me and um for your attention you to all of the uh, the items well, wasn't that better than going out for a drink in a pub garden somewhere? absolutely councillor morehood absolutely